Video number two of uh, the May June 2023 exams. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. And uh, this is your favorite uncle, and I'll be making sure that uh, I give you everything pertaining to maths and science. Right, let's quickly have a look at it. If you haven't watched the first video uh, of this, uh, you can go uh, and do that. And please, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Do it now, all right? Okay, so let's go through simultaneous equations and the other question. Right, so we've got here for 1.2. They give us 3 into x plus y, okay, uh, is equal to 27, right? So, and in this case, we need to solve simultaneously. So, in the other equation, we've got x squared. In fact, let me do this. Uh, let me say uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 17, Right, now, first thing that we're supposed to do, let's call this equation 1, and let's call this equation 2, right? Now, I'm going to say from equation 1, okay? So, we're taking equation 1 and say, well, this is base 3, right? But how can we write 27 as a base of 3? Now, remember, this is 3 cubed, because 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3, that would be 27, right? So in this case, uh, that means now our bases are the same. That means that we can drop the exponents, right? So that means x plus y is equal to 3. And so what we normally uh, strive for is to make one subject of the formula. So I'm going to make y the subject of the formula. And when you make one subject of the formula, please try and avoid fractions or anything that has complexities in it. Okay, so in this case, I've got um, y is equal to 3 minus x, right? So we'll make that equation 3, right? Now, when you substitute, please, you cannot substitute this back into the equation where it comes from, right? Uh, which was equation 1. So I'm going to take substitute equation 3 into equation 2. So everywhere I see y in equation 2, I'm going to put 3 minus x. So equation 2 is x squared plus y squared. But instead of y, we're going to put 3 minus x squared, right? And they said this is equal to 17, right? So that's x squared. Now let's deal with this guy here. Right, we said we take the square of the one number. 3 squared is 9. And then for the middle term, it's this one multiplied by this one multiplied by 2. So we're going to say 3 times negative x is negative 3x times 2. That will give us minus 6x. So that will be minus 6x plus, in this case, this is x squared and this is 17. So let's put it in standard uh, quadratic form. Um, so that's going to be x squared plus x squared, that's 2x squared. And we've got, okay, we have only 1x term, so that's minus 6x. Okay, and now if I take the 17 to the other side, it becomes negative. So I'll have 9 minus 17. Okay, so that will give us negative 8. Okay. Right, and this is equal to 0. Now, you can see all of those are factors of 2. So I'm going to divide every term by 2. So 2 divided by 2, that's 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, so let's try and factorize there. Okay, so that's x and x. Factors of 4, that when you subtract, give you 3. That will be 4 and 1. Okay, and we know that we've got different signs inside the bracket when we've got that negative there. So that means that the bigger product would be negative. So negative 4x uh, becomes our bigger product, right? So x is equal to 4 or x is negative 1. Okay, now uh, in this case, ladies and gents, uh, what we need to do 
is just to make sure that, um, you know, as much as we possibly can, all right, we just substitute there. Um, so, um, so we've got x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 1. Sorry about that. That was supposed to be negative 1. So now we're going to substitute for these values. x is equal to 4 and x is negative 1 into equation 3, right? So we're looking for the value of y. So we're going to put that in equation 1. Now remember... Equation 3 was uh, y is equal to 3 minus x, so that y is equal to 3 minus 4. And on this one, y is equal to 3 minus a negative 1. I don't know why I keep saying 1 there. So y is negative 1 or y is equal to 4 okay so which means when x is 4 y is negative 1 when x is negative 1 y is 4 right i hope that makes sense ladies and gents as we keep tracking right so the next question um they give us that uh, little complexity there they say determine without the use of a calculator, the value of, right? So they're giving you a sum, okay? Uh, I think that is 1.4, right? 1.3 rather. Okay, so for 1.3, so the first term of the sum would be 1 over 1 square root 1 plus square root 2. And the next sum or rather the next term is square root 2 plus square root 3 and the next term is square root 3 plus square root 4 and so it continues and the last term being 1 over root 99 plus root 100 okay right sorry that i tried to squeeze that in there Right, now, if you want to think about it, ladies and gents, and I'm going to do this for the first three terms so that you can follow what I'm doing. So for the first term, right? So one over square root one plus square root two, right? So what we normally do is that we rationalize the denominator. And what do we do when we rationalize the denominator? We multiply by the conjugate, okay? So the conjugate um, is... Uh, the same as your denominator when you've got thirds, right? But in this case, uh, with a different sign. So keep that in mind, okay? So that's square root 2. But what I do on, uh, at the bottom, I do at the top, okay? So that this is in its true sense, just simply multiplying by 1. Okay, so what do I get for term 1? I'll get square root 1 minus square root 2. That's at the top, right? 1 multiplied by that will be itself. And then at the bottom, so notice what have I done? I've created the difference of two squares, right? Okay, so that means that I will have just 1. So remember, square root of 1 times square root of 1 is 1. Okay, root 2 uh, times root 2 will give me 2. So I'll just simply have 1 minus 2. So if you think about it, so I'll have 1 minus square root 2 over negative 1. Right? Now I want you to please think about it. If I take that negative 1, um, you know, uh, in this case, I multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1. Okay? Remember, a negative times a negative would give me a positive. But what it does in this case is that it makes... So if I multiply by negative 1 on both sides, I'll have negative 1 plus root 2. Or we can look at it as just simply saying root 2 minus 1, which is, uh, in this case, 
uh, uh, root 2 minus root 1. Okay, so that's the first term. So think about what happens in the second term, right? So in the second term, we had 1 over root 2 plus root 3, right? Again, we're going to do the same thing, right? So um, multiply by the conjugate. Okay, but what I do at the bottom, I do at the top. Uh, sorry, that's minus root 3. Okay, so what happens in this case? Again, we end up with the root 2 minus root 3, right? If we multiply that by 1 and our conjugate, what does it become? It becomes 2 minus 3, which would give us negative 1, right, at the bottom. And at the top, you still have root 2 minus root 3. But we can actually swap this around. Uh, when we multiply by negative on both sides, or, or I mean at the denominator as well as uh, the numerator, right? What do we end up with? Okay, let me not make this confusing. So this would be the same as root 3 minus root 2. Okay, so remember now this is term 2. All right, I hope you're seeing the pet the pattern, right? If I take term 3, I'll have the same thing again. So root 3 plus root 4. And again, I'll keep doing the same thing. Root 3 minus root 4. And root 3 minus root 4. Right? So again, what will I end up with? I'm sure you're beginning to see the pattern now. I'll have root 3 minus root 4 all over negative 1, right? So, which is equal to root 4 minus root 3, okay? Right, now I want you to just think about it. If I take term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3, right? What was our term 1? That's root 2 minus root 1 plus for term 2, right? That was root 3 minus root 2. Root 3 minus root 2. Okay. And what about term 3? Okay. So uh, term 3 would be root 4 minus root 3. Right. Now notice what happens. Okay. So if you look at, as I keep adding, this guy cancels with that guy this guy cancels with that guy right um so what keeps happening you keep so which means the next the next one what was it going to be you can kind of predict it isn't it right because you are basically incrementing a number so the next one would have been uh, root 5 minus root 4 okay so that means that 4 and negative root 4 uh, in this case would cancel. So you are left with this one. Now, you can keep doing this until you get to term, um, to the last term, right? So let's say the last term. But what was our last term? Okay, that's 1 over root 100 uh, plus root 99, right? So we know if we keep doing this, our last term would actually root be root 100 minus root 99, okay? But remember, this root 99 would actually cancel with the term before it, okay? So essentially, what are we going to be left with? We will be left with the root 100 and... Our first term, which was uh, minus a uh, root 1. So essentially, if we are looking at this, right, we're going to be left with the last term, which is root 100 minus the square root of 1. And so root 100 is 10. Root 1 is 1. And so the final answer is 9. 
Right, ladies and gents, I hope that you were able to follow that. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those that, you know, higher order questions that you always need to keep in mind on how to tackle. Okay, right. Otherwise, we'll be coming back with question two. See you guys next time. Shop, shop.